Hi guys, it's James here from Beowulf Training. Um, just wanted to go through uh, one of the things that we commonly uh, see or hear in the squat uh, in terms of pain. Uh, it's pain in the front of the knee. Uh, it can quite commonly be just slightly above or below the kind of kneecap. Um, and yeah, you can kind of feel it when you squat. Quite commonly, it's when you get more towards the bottom of your squat. Um, Couple of things that it could be. So one of the things, it could be quad tightness, um, and we've done previous videos before about the uh, foam rolling, uh, and you can apply that to that quad muscle, so um, if you're not quite sure on how to do that, go back and check the video out. Um, so that is one option. It can be tightness of the quad pulling down into the structures in the front of the knee. The other thing it could be is just a mechanical issue, and it could be something that's really um, simple to rectify, and it could just be this kind of knee dominant squat. So what I mean by that, is as you start to descend into that squat pattern, you send the knees forward first. Um, and it's something we want to try and avoid. Um, we can just put too much load through, again, those structures in the front of the knee. Um, if we cue that by a hip dominant movement, um, we look to try and maybe keep the knees still. Um, we're gonna take some of that stress away and we can load the other kind of big musculature that should be taking the majority of the load in the bottom of the squat. So having a little bit of kind of forward movement in the knee is absolutely fine. Um, just when it becomes excessive, or if you do feel that pain, that there may be a little bit of an issue. Um, I say we want to try and get into the bigger structures down in those legs and through the hips, so glutes, hamstrings, um, so that we can actually remove the stress um, and basically get into a nice pain, pain-free squat position. So what we're going to do is uh, set up your natural kind of air squat position um, and we're going to look to, as you sit down, initiate the movement from the hips first. And we're going to try and see if we can keep the knee almost still, let's say a little bit of forward movement is okay, um, but nothing excessive. Um, if we can do that, great. Uh, you may find that uh, the, the, the knee is still trapped forward, so if it is a mechanical issue and you're used to um, that squat where the knees just kind of uh, move forward, you may need to do something like a box um, just to kind of give yourself a little bit of a barrier. You may find that actually your depth isn't anywhere near where it normally would be and that's fine, it might take a little bit of time if you can get used to that position. Um, so make use of uh, the tempo on the way down, so just make sure it's nice and slow, nice and controlled and if you get to that point where you feel like you know, you're running out of space and you can't quite hit that depth, Spend some time in a pause position, get your body used to it, um, and just spend time. Okay, if you're rushing through it, uh, then you're not going to get the most out of the drill. All right, so using that box is a really, really nice way of kind of just making sure those knees aren't tracking too far forward. Take your time, work on your depth, use those tempos and pauses to your advantage, um, and build up the strength uh, in that position. So another really good cue that you can use uh, other than kind of initiating from the hips is making sure that you get weight into your heels. Uh, it's probably something you've heard uh, a lot before, which is great, it's a great cue. Um, you also need to make sure that you do keep uh, the balls and the toes of your feet down as well. So if you feel like you're rocking back just onto the heels, make sure you can grab into the floor with your toes as well. It's gonna give you uh, a much better opportunity to create that kind of tension into the floor. Um, using a box squat actually is a really nice way of doing this. So you're moving the box from the front, uh, actually behind you. Uh, it gives you the ability, a bit more confidence, I guess, to actually sit into that position, sit into your heels, shift the hips back. Um, and if you felt you're gonna fall, you know you have that box behind you as a little bit of a, a safety net. So you can kind of sit yourself down uh, if you needed to. You can uh, come down, make light touches and stand. You can pause with your bums on the box. There's a number of ways that you can do that. Um, but like I say, it's more of a, a, safety, a safety net for you guys just to kind of uh, get used to that new, new position, the new range of movement. So initially, actually starting with uh, smaller, uh, smaller amounts of reps and sets is probably more beneficial just to make sure that you focus on the quality rather than just the quantity. Um, so you may find that you can kind of treat it like a strength set. So you may do you know, three, four sets of anywhere from three to six reps, just really focusing on that, um, that speed and that, that control and that pause. Um, by all means, obviously, that may go up to more kind of regular uh, sets. It may be three, four of 10 to 12 reps, 15 reps. And as you build up that um, strength and that ability to hit the position, by all means, the reps can increase. Rest in between, it can be rest as needed, I guess. Um, Try not to exceed that two minute mark, um, but give yourself at least 30 seconds, somewhere between there. Um, like I said, you may need a bit more right at the very start. Um, 
you may still experience some pain, especially if it's like a, an ongoing issue. Uh, that's fine, it's potentially to be expected depending on what the issue is. Um, in terms of that range, if it's anywhere from like a one to a three on a pain scale of one to 10, then you're good to go. Uh, anything from like a three to five, then you're probably still okay, but just be wary of it. You may need to just reduce the reps um, or reduce the sets or have a look at the rest. Um, anything above a five, I'd recommend that you stop. Okay, we don't want to aggravate that uh, knee any more uh, than we need to. So as always, when we're talking about pain, it's always recommended that you go and see a professional um, who can advise you on what that pain actually is. Um, as I mentioned, it could be just a, a tightness thing. Uh, it could be something more. So it's always best just to go and get that checked out um, and just make sure that the drills that you are doing uh, are beneficial to kind of relieving that pain. As always, guys, any questions, please let us know.